Hey guys, welcome back to the FBC Okeechobee podcast for another episode this week. Yeah. Marie, you ready to go? Yes. Awesome. And um, our next um, podcast will not feature you. Oh, it's too bad. I know. The crowd will be let down. We haven't decided who's going to sit in. It'll either be uh, Pastor Mitch or Pastor Corey. I think they're going to... Are they fighting over it? They're going to have a scrap to see who has to do it and who gets to run the cameras. Okay. So we'll see how that works out. Big shoes to fill. You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. You bring a lot to the table. So uh, we're continuing our discussion in the book of Mark, and we're going to finish up Mark chapter 2 today because it's only like three verses, so if we don't, there's a major problem. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we a lot should, of pressure. Whew, but it's all, we'll read it all at one time, that way no matter what happens, we're done. Okay. And then we'll pick up Mark chapter three with our um, our guest, our guest host, and then uh, come back to you later. Okay. So uh, this continues off of the discussion from last time with the uh, idea about the Sabbath. Remember we talked about uh, them fasting Mm -hmm. and then it went into the wineskins and now Jesus is going to continue to respond dealing with the religious law and how the Pharisees were stuck on this and it'll even continue on into chapter 3 as well. It is interesting that this is what is recorded because don't you think that there were things that happened in between but these are the things that were recorded and put in there for us to know yeah. today. Yeah, this um, this whole chapter seems to be pretty much one conversation. But at the end of the Gospel of John, it tells us that not everything was recorded. Like John's really honest and says, hey, man, if we wrote down everything and fill up all the libraries, like this is just what you need to know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there was a ton of things. But I think the reason that um, God saw fit to include this in Scripture was so that we wouldn't fall into this trap of legalism and ritual that the Pharisees fell into because we can do it just as easily with Christianity as they did it with Old Testament Judaism. Right, I agree. Because remember, the the New Covenant and the Old Covenant are intertwined. You know, so we're worshiping the same God. And the, the moral code is carried over from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So it would be very, very easy, and you see it a lot. You see people dive into the ritual and the legalistic Mm -hmm. side instead of actual worship. And Jesus really busts them for this. Rightly so. Rightly so. So here's what it says in verse 25. Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read the Scriptures, what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. And Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. A lot of things happening right here. Right. Did you talk about what the question was in the first place? Well, Jesus is just continuing. He's continuing to talk after verses 23 and 24 where um, the disciples were coming through and they were breaking off the heads of grain. Right. You're right, I should have started at verse 23. So let's read 23 to give you the proper context. I apologize, I messed that up. Verse 23 says this, One Sabbath day as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, the disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? And then Jesus goes mm-hmm. in to address that with them and then says, haven't you ever read the Scripture? And then talks about David taking the showbread. Right. So there was all these weird rules uh, that, that the Pharisees had that they stacked up, especially on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was such a big deal to them that they didn't just take the Bible at its word. They stacked things up. Like, here's a few things. They were forbidden from traveling more than 3,000 feet from their homes. Why 3,000 feet? I have no idea. It's totally arbitrary. Nowhere in Scripture does it say anything about that. They couldn't carry an object that made war more than a dried fig. It's totally arbitrary. Yeah, bizarre, actually. Uh, you uh, could not throw an object in the air with one hand and catch it with the other. <laughs> I like that one. Um, if the Sabbath came upon you as you were reaching out for some food, because it started at 6 o'clock on Friday evening and went till 6 o'clock on Saturday evening, so if the Sabbath came upon you as you were reaching out for some food, you would have to drop the food before you pulled your arm back. Otherwise, you would be guilty of carrying a burden on the Sabbath. Say that again. 
I don't understand that. If I'm reaching out at 559 to get a chicken leg. Okay. <laughs> and as I'm pulling the chicken leg back to myself, it drops to six o'clock and becomes the Sabbath. I have to drop it. Otherwise, I carried a burden on the Sabbath. A burden. A burden. That is not a burden. <laughs> a, chicken, a chicken leg is not a burden. I agree with you totally. That'd be like me with a chicken wing. I'm going to give me a chicken wing, dip it in some ranch. Yeah. Take, take care that's of business. A delight. I love chicken wings. But that's how they did. And none of this, none of this was biblical. There's nothing in the scripture telling us this. Like they came up, false teeth could not be worn because they exceeded the weight limits. You take your false teeth out. It's insanity. Yeah, it is crazy. So, I mean, I get why they would say um, if someone was working or harvesting on the Sabbath, that would be considered work. But that's not what they were doing. They weren't harvesting. They were literally picking things off to They were to just eat. feeding themselves. Right. Yeah, they were just feeding themselves. And that was legal. It was like, um, it was referred to as gleaning. Mm -hmm. Basically, they could break off like these little pieces to have something to eat. And they're just literally snacking on this grain. Which is part of um, the law, isn't it? In Leviticus, it talks about how the harvesters are supposed to leave a certain portion of the for wheat the poor. for the poor and those who are traveling and come through mm -hmm. so that they can yeah. partake. Yeah. In the book of Ruth, Boaz actually mm -hmm. tells um, when Ruth is gleaning on Boaz's field because Boaz told her, said, no, no, you stay with me, stay with my guys, because he he knew that she would be safe. Mm -hmm. And then he told him, he was like, drop a little extra. Yeah. Because Boaz was really wealthy. It didn't matter to him. And so he had dropped extra because I think he had, he had a crush on Ruth. But anyway, it worked out for him. So um, that's that same process. So they were even saying, you can't take care of yourself. You can't feed yourself. You couldn't, um, if a Jew was injured on the Sabbath, it was unlawful to treat him more than enough to keep him alive because that would be considered work. We're going to let you lay there until uh, tomorrow. Right. Like, it's just insanity. It is kind of crazy because, I mean, I was going over with Charlie the other day. We were talking about the creation story and how on the seventh day God rested mm -hmm. and how that is an example for us. Because yeah, God didn't need to rest. He did right. that as an and I example. Think Again, the purpose of it is to rest in your spirit and mm -hmm. in communion with God and then um, to rest physically, but not necessarily to overindulge and try to only care about yourself and be selfish. He cares about all people and if mm -hmm. we can help someone during the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, then. yeah, we should help. Now, Now, you know, I mean, honestly, you know, do I think in our culture we honor the Sabbath and do I even think there's a lot of Christians that yeah. don't um, honor the Sabbath as it should be? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think it's a fascinating topic because I think um, we, I don't know, we don't respect it enough to have studied it and, and try to figure out as a, a community mm -hmm. what that should look like. Yeah. So I think there's misunderstandings. It's not um, a legalistic thing where you're supposed to do this, this, and this, yeah. and it's not an overindulgent thing where you can't work at all. You need to just sit down and like, you can't help not somebody do anything, yeah, not do anything on that yeah. day. There's um, there's a balance to be found. Like we need to we need to respect the the spirit of the Sabbath and what it's supposed to be and honor that. But we don't have to go to the level that the Pharisees went to with crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and like be crazy legalistic either. But then at the same time, I know that a lot of people in Western Western culture don't honor the Sabbath at all. They yeah. don't even but we Christians. As Christian, we as Christians should. But even Christians, I tend to feel like they just, okay, yeah, I went to church, check, and then that's all. It's, it's not really a laying aside of that day to, um, I don't know, center yourself. Yeah, to and, commune with God mm -hmm. and to literal, literally rest. Mm -hmm. Like God understands how he made us and that we need... We need rest. We need downtime. You know, we need that. Like, you know, um, it makes me think about um, Ben Shapiro, who is, who, who uh, I know, you know, you and I both watch some of his videos and things. And uh, he's uh, he's Jewish and, you know, like Orthodox. Like, mm -hmm. he's, he's in. And he won't, he turns his phone off. Yeah. Five, at 6 o'clock on Friday night, his phone is turned off. He does look at computers, look at anything, totally disconnects from everything, and then picks his phone and his computer back up. 6 p.m. on Saturday. Okay, like, so that may even I, be a little bit far for me. I know. Knowing that, and I have in the last few weeks just thought, well, 
is that something that I should do on Sunday to honor the Sabbath? And like, I really thought about it and prayed about it. And it's almost like God was just like, Marie, that is not what I'm asking you to do. I'm yeah, not asking yeah. you not to read the news on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you to, to, to commune with me and to, and to love me yeah. and to rest in me. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think we have to go that far. That's just an right. example of what he does. Right. But I do appreciate that it kind of, of kind of unplugging a little bit from the things that stress you. That's the thing. For him, and that's his work. That is like, his work. He, he is in the news. So maybe that's part of it is yeah. removing himself from that. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Um, but I think and if it was some... stressful for me, then yeah, that's probably not something that yeah, I should I do think that that idea do. of stepping back from, mm-hmm. from things that cloud our minds, cause us anxiety, cause us stress, to step back from those things for that period of time and let, our, let us rest. Like I was talking last night, I uh, Friday and Saturday... Um, and Sunday this this week, I barely look read any news. You know, I've got several you know news guys on YouTube that I watch very frequently. Yeah. I didn't watch anything. I totally unplugged from all of it because I really felt I, it was stressing me out, and I needed to decompress. Right. And so it kind of let me just unplug and be like. Especially in today's. Yeah, yeah. But I think we need to do that. Like we need to, we need to unplug from mm-hmm. work. You know, like I try to have, and for me, Sundays is that's my busiest day of the week. You know, I'm speaking a minimum of three times, mm-hmm. sometimes four, um, depending on what else I might be doing with meetings and things that day. It's, it's the day I get up the earliest and the day I work the latest. So that is, but it's a special day. But like I need to. Taking like I want to have like either Friday or Saturday one when I disconnect from a lot of those things and just have that day of, and I think that our whole culture would be a lot better and people's blood pressure would be a lot lower if they could take one of the, what take a day, worship, relax, commune with God and just kind of disconnect from these things. See, I think worship is part of it. I think also God just wanted us to have a moment when we stopped and just, Oh, I'm gonna go take a nap. I think there's, I think that's that's a part of that Sabbath Sabbath idea too. Mm-hmm. Of it was a day of rest for God, and it should be a day of worship and a day of rest for us. Yeah, I so, agree. There's know. nothing quite like that Sunday afternoon nap. I think we can all agree on that. Sunday right? afternoon nap. <laughs> it's extra good. When I get to get one of those, it is the best. Yeah, it is. I love a Sunday afternoon nap. What about? Can I ask you a, a difficult question? What about? Um, some of the extra curricular things that people are ten- tending to do on Sunday instead of going to church and things like that. Anti. Okay. If um, like, look, I, I come at it from this point of view. If you enjoy and like to rest and relax by going fishing or going to a ball game or something, whatever, I don't care. Like, I think for me, you know, like one of the things that you know I like to do on Sunday afternoon. Is uh, I like so sometimes I watch I've watched ball games in the past. Um, I there's certain TV shows that I like to you know sit and watch an episode or two of like a, a Seinfeld, a Parks and Rec, The Office, something like that. Just relax a little bit, take a nap. So I'm fine with that. But when we're doing these extracurricular things that pull us away from being able to corporately worship, mm-hmm. then I think we we we're 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 crossing the line because worship is a part of it that was made very clear in the Book of Acts that the church gathered on that Sabbath to worship. They celebrated the Lord's Supper. They listened to the apostles teach. They shared a meal together. They, they sang songs. Like literally, kind of what we do at church now is really what they did. We've just got lights and microphones. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we sang some different songs in our language. But, you know, we, and we're, we're oftentimes teaching the same exact things that the apostles taught, or maybe we're teaching from the Old Testament, like some of the prophets or something, uh, the patriarchs, whatever. But I think that when we are doing stuff that pulls us away from that and we're not assembling, there's an issue. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely an issue. And I don't I don't know, you know, any other way to say it. I, I do think that those things have been a detriment to the church and a detriment to families. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty strong on that. Now each family, you gotta decide what you want to do, and uh, you and God work that out. I'm not your judge, jury, or executioner. 
So that's between you and the Lord, but that's I my personal that, opinion. Um, that can be helpful for some of the people listening maybe who are wondering that themselves. And I think that another thing that you can do too is just if you're if you're sitting down and when you're quiet, you feel a sense of, of guilt and shame over something that you're doing, you need to take another look at it. Mm-hmm. And I think that... And the Sabbath gives us an opportunity to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It should just give, an op- uh, give us an opportunity to slow down and think and rest, rest our minds, fit, rest our minds, rest our spirit, rest ourselves um, physically. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think there, there's there's both those things in there. And going to church and worshiping with fellow believers should recharge you. And so, you know, it, I grew up going to church. And long before I was a pastor, when I was a teenager and started having options, like really going to Sunday morning church, for me, growing up, was not an option. Mm -hmm. Everything else I did was an option. Like my mom was going to make me go to church on Sunday morning. That was not even a question. But all of the other things I did were totally an option for me. From singing in the youth choir, which I was not very good at, but, you know, um, to being a part of um, a uh, a drama ministry that traveled and did a lot of things, um, attending youth um, events and services and worship and camps and retreats and mission trips. All those other things I did throughout the week, except for Sunday morning, were totally optional. My mom wasn't going to make me do any of those. Right. So I found value in that long before I became a pastor. So I would be there no matter what whatever line of work I was in or wherever God guided my life, if he guided me differently, which he didn't, I'd be in those places because I think it's important. Like it is important to be a part of that. And when you forsake that, you're stepping out of line with God. I mean, there's just the scripture's clear, but each person has to deal with that on their own. I agree. Now, um, Christ, though, he was traveling at this time. Is that why they were... Yeah, they were walking. I don't know how far they were walking. It says they were walking through some grain fields. Um, maybe he was going to walk more than 3,000 feet. I'm not sure. They probably would have called him out on it. Probably so. If he did. Probably so. Maybe he took a shortcut through the grain field so that he wouldn't go 3,000 feet. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And so then Jesus comes back with an awesome story. He immediately does something that disarms them. He takes them to Scripture. Not only does he take them to Scripture... He takes them to David. So there's a few people in the Bible that the Pharisees would have had this crazy respect for. Abraham, Moses, David. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the warrior king, man. This is the guy. This is the man after God's own heart. And so they're they're reading the book of Samuel because for in the Jewish um, Old Testament, there is no 1st and 2nd Samuel. It's just Samuel. It's just one long book. There is no first and second kings. It's just kings. Same with Chronicles. There's no first and seconds in the Old okay. Testament. They're just all one big lump. But it's the same exact um, uh, scripture. There's no difference between what is in the Hebrew Old Testament and what we have in the Old Testament, say, in a Bible that you go and buy at Walmart. Same exact, same exact thing. So they just split it when um, Saul dies is what Christians did. I don't know why they did it. No one really need. It would have been one really long book, but who cares? So what? Psalms seems to be kind of long. You know, I think it's okay. So anyway, David would have been very respected by them. And he goes to the story of David when Saul tried to kill him. Mm-hmm. As you know, for any of you might not be familiar, Saul was the first king of Israel, and he was... David's father-in-law. David married Saul's daughter, Mahel was her name. And he married her. And so Saul gets jealous of David and tried to pin him to a wall with a spear. So he slings this spear at David. So David decides after being um, abused and a couple of attempted murder, you know, times there with Saul, he's got to get out of here. And so that's what Jesus references in 25 through 28 when David and some men that were with him, they went to the tabernacle, which was where the nation's worship centered around. It's where the Ark of the Covenant was inside that tent before they built Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple is just a permanent version of the tabernacle. They're very, very, very similar as far as their layout. So he goes in 
and he takes a couple of things. And, and Jesus doesn't reference the other thing that he takes. He takes Samson's, or excuse me, Goliath's sword. It was crazy that it was in yeah. there. Goliath's sword had stayed at the tabernacle after David had killed Goliath, and he killed Goliath, and he beheaded Goliath with glass on sword. And so David, the David left the left it kind of in the care of the tabernacle. So David, as a grown man now, goes back and he gets the sword. I guess his thought was, I killed him. I took it. I need it now. And mm-hmm. so because he doesn't have anything to arm himself with, so he takes Goliath's sword, and then he takes what's known as the showbread. There was this loaf of bread that was baked every day and it was put on this table that was inside the tabernacle. And the same thing happened in the temple later. And the bread would be replaced every day. It was symbolic of the relationship between the people and God. It was like they were friends and they would have a meal together. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it kind of represented. It represented this, this, this close relationship. And so when they replaced the bread every day, the 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 previous loaf, the priest would eat it. Priest would eat it. Yeah. yeah. So, but nobody with the priest was supposed to do that at the appropriate time. Well, David comes in and he takes it, and he ate it and shared some of it with his friends. This sacred, special, blessed showbread. It was just bread, but you know, was mm-hmm. put in this special spot. And Jesus Jesus tells them this, and then he said to them after telling that story, he says, "The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people." not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So that goes back to that idea that the Sabbath was for the people. It was for them to commune with God. It was for them to rest. It was for their betterment. And God wasn't putting a weight on them with the Sabbath. The Pharisees put a weight on them. And that's where a lot of the the legalistic side can come in, that you don't want to cross over into that. But you still want to honor and use the Sabbath appropriately for what God meant it for because you're going to be in a better place spiritually, emotionally, and physically if you do. I agree. I do think that you just kind of, everyone will have to judge for themselves yeah. what that entails, mm-hmm. don't you think? Yeah, but I think if they examine Scripture for themselves and they look at it and they're honest about it, they'll come to the same conclusions. But, like I said, I'm nobody's judge. Right. I can't be. So I've got, my, I've got, I've got issues myself. So everybody's got to come to that on their own. But I think all of us, if we sit down and study Scripture and look at it properly and understand it, in most every case, we're all going to come to the same conclusions when we stop and look at Scripture and go, well, that's what it says. And sometimes I might not like what it says. I don't like everything the Bible says. But that doesn't mean I'm not bound to it. I just don't know that I agree that everyone will come to the same conclusions. If you're honest, you will. The reason I, I said that, with that. Though, I, I, I disagree with you on that one. Is because look at Paul and Peter. Mm-hmm. Peter really struggled with the idea of changing the way he eat, he ate um, to reflect um, the truth that God was trying to show him. Mm-hmm. And so, didn't they say that if your conscience is struggling to eat a certain food that you shouldn't? eat it and then Mm -hmm. if you are okay with it then to do it so the i'm not talking about let me let me finish i'm I'm talking about small things like for someone they may say i cannot mow the grass on a sunday yeah i'm fine with that and then someone else might be like what does it matter i don't feel bad about that at all that's peaceful time it's not necessarily going to hurt me any i'll go ahead and do that so I think that there are nuances that people will come to different conclusions. There might be, but the overarching need to have that time to rest, reflect, and gather to worship, none of us can can argue. No, about. I have no, no problem with that. There might be some minutia. I'm saying how that looks for different people. Could be. Could be slightly different. Could be slightly slightly different. Yeah. But you know, if we're going to ignore gathering together to worship. We're going to ignore the need to rest, and we're going to ignore the need to spend time with God. Well, that's the purpose of the Sabbath. Right. And so, like you say, how that might look might be a little different for somebody, but the overarching big picture is not going to change. It's going to be sitting right there. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's the case with most things in Scripture. You know, but that passage that you were just talking about. Um, what it was uh, Paul was writing about that? It was dealing with food sacrificed to idols, 
And basically, Paul was like, "That's just food. These people are dumb. There is no those. There's no gods. But if it bothers people, then like just don't eat it. It's okay. Yeah, I think that they're, and that's what I mean in that instance. Nuances yeah. that may be different for different people mm-hmm. and different generations. Yeah, this story is off topic, but I have to share it because it made okay. me think about this. We had a pastor in my hometown, in my home church. Yeah. I, won't, I won't call his name. <laughs> okay. He was, he, he was he was a really nice guy, but he would mow the grass in his uh, button-up shirt, white button-up long sleeve shirt, dress pants, dress shoes. Really? Black socks. Because in his mind, the pastor should not wear shorts in public. And he thought he needed to dress up and look look like that even when he was mowing the grass outside. What about jeans or? Never saw the man in a pair of jeans in my life. Khakis was as low as I saw him go. <laughs> that was the step down. So when I mean, you're this mowing the like, grass, like what, like if pants. mowing the grass is dress pants yeah. attire, then yeah. what could possibly warrant khaki pants? I saw him in a pair of khaki pants a few times at like, like in the office at the church when I would go down to see my youth pastor. I mean, okay. Yeah. Like. It didn't hurt anybody. No, no, it didn't hurt anybody. He was a but, super nice guy. But like, I felt I like, I honestly, I felt like that was a little bit of, I mean, that a was little a little much, little much, yeah. a little bit. I mean, I feel like there was maybe a little bit of legalism right there yeah. in that. But you know, that's between him and Jesus. And I mean, it didn't hurt anything. But boy, that you thought it was funny when we would drive by his house and be like, uh, well, I there he imagine. is. Riding, riding on an old riding lawnmower with them pants I on. I would have liked to have seen that. Oh, it was quite, it was quite yeah. inventive. You know, I just, I was blown away. Like, I'm talking about the knit, like, legit, like, suit pants kind of thing. I can see Mowing it. Mowing the grass. I can see it. Yep, yep. Uh, riding mower, you said? Yeah. Okay. He'd weed eat and everything, too, with mower. <laughs> I guess he had an old pair that he designated these as the, the grass-cutting dress pants. The yard dress work pants. dress pants. Yard work dress pants. Myself, you know, I was just, I've never been able to go that route. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a little bit of a side that note. So is, that was a good story. Shared a story for yeah. you guys. So next time you see me mowing the grass, which you aren't going to see. You won't see uh, that You won't see that. But, um, yeah, we'll, uh, I will not be wearing dress. And next time I do yard work of any kind, there will be no dress I, pants on. I don't remember the last time. I did yard work? Yeah. Let me share that story briefly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. I had a grass cutting business when I was a kid. When I was uh, in high school and college, and I cut like a lot of the grass for like some of the ladies at church and different families uh, in our church around town, and so um, I now hate to cut grass because the cutting grass for me equals sweat, yeah. ant bites, and grass all over me, and so I do not like it. The smell of fresh cut grass just makes me mad. So I have a that's I have an a guy. exaggeration. I have a guy. And I'm very happy to have him. We he have a great, great guy. Work. He's yeah. very good. He's very good. I'd have no problem. I have no problem giving him a little money every month to come cut my grass. No, I agree. I'm perfectly happy with it. There may come a day when I'm pushing the breeze and Well, because I like it done at a certain time. Like, I don't, I don't like yeah, to Yeah, relying have on me will be tall. negative. And it's a very small yard, so it's not a big deal. I think it helps our marriage because there's no I think animosity it probably there. Does too. Yeah. It's good. Yes. Good yes. investment. <laughs> yes, yes. You have, you have let a few um, grass cutters go over the years. When they didn't perform to your standards. Did. So, you know, that's how it works. So you, I might have been let go. I would have been let go. I know. How how do you, how do you let, I Yeah, know. how would we, how, would, know, that, how, that how would, would that work in our relationship? It would not go well. I would be glad to be fired from more than grass. I would be like, solid, <laughs> I'm glad. You would do it on purpose just to get fired. I would be bad at it just so you stopped asking me to do it. You would. That would be, one of, that would be the thing to do. That's funny. So. But we want to thank you guys for joining us for the FPC Overtory Podcast. You got a little extra there at the yes. end. No problem. Hope you enjoyed it. But uh, you won't see Marie for our next podcast next week, but she'll be back the following week, and we hope that you guys have a great day.